In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a basic infographic design like this. And this is coming up. Hello everybody and welcome to the channel once again. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. If you're new here, please hit on the subscribe button if you're with you. Thank you so much for showing up. Today we're looking at creating an infographic design in Photoshop. So let's get into the video. Alright, so basically I'll be making use of um, some health tips on this viral pandemic disease that is going on that has caused the world to a uh, crash in and I'll be using the tips to come out with these particular infographics. Every tip that I'm going to provide was from the World Health Organization. So they are fully certified and they are great. The actual design is not the important message of this video. The health tips are the most important part. Of this video but let's get started so i'm going to start off by creating a 4 by 4 inch so i'll press ctrl n to start with the creation i'm going to select 600 for the resolution and then i'll press ok now once i have this one on my desktop i have a particular world map since this pandemic or this disease is affecting the whole of the world so i have this world map over here you know the world has to stand up together to fight this particular situation so i have it over here i right click and then rasterize the layer i push it up on top here i press ctrl a to make sure that it is centered and then i'm going to decrease the opacity way low like this so around 30 20 to 30 percent any one of them will work out pretty fine and then you can press ctrl t to open this one up a little bit now once you're done with this we're going to create some guidelines to help us so i'll go to view and then new guideline and at the vertical i'm going to create a five percent guideline and then a 95 percent guideline so you choose the new guideline you type in the number of percentage you want and then you click ok so it creates a guideline for you you later get to realize why we are doing this so once we're done dealing with vertical divides we go ahead to the horizontal and i'm going to split this into three sections so i'll go to view new guideline and then i'm going to select the horizontal what i'm going to do is i'm going to type 33.3 that is dividing the whole 100 by 3 okay so 33.3 and then i'll go again i'll do that for 66.6 .6. And then to make sure that we have a line separating these two, I'm going to select the new guideline again and then I'm going to choose 50%. So it is going to split this into two. So we're going to make use of these two sections over here. Now the last thing, the last guideline that we're going to add is the vertical 50% that will create or divide this particular work into two vertical points and then I'll click OK. So once we're done with creating the sections, I'll go ahead and then I'm going to pick my ellipse tool. So I'll choose the ellipse tool, hold shift, and then I'm going to create a circle, a nice one. And then I'll press Ctrl A to select it all, center it both horizontally and then vertically to make sure that this is right in the middle. So I'm going to double click on the layer thumbnail over here. And then I'm going to choose this particular color for this one. I click OK, press Ctrl T and then I'm going to open this one up a little bit, the more like this and then I'm going to double click on that one. I press Ctrl J to make a duplicate, double click on the layer thumbnail over here and then I'm going to change the color back to white. I press Ctrl T and then I'm going to transform this one up to make something like this, a smaller one and basically I want to change the color of this one. so it can be more or less like white but then it looks quite gray yeah something like that so i'll click ok when i'm done so coming back at the first ellipse or circle that we created i'm going to press ctrl j to make another duplicate i'll press ctrl t and i'm going to transform this one out like this we're going to change it to something else okay so don't worry i'll go to the fill over here and i'm going to turn off the fill i'll go to the paths here and then i'll double click on this path thumbnail so once it is double clicked you see that it come that same path so you're going to create a new path and then you click ok so you see this shape around it and then i'll go for the test tool i'm currently using poppins i'll put a link to download it in the description 
so i'll start from here and then i'll change the color to black i'll click ok and then i'm going to press on the or type in the dot or full stop so that it can go around this so we're basically creating a dotted line around this shape that we've created that is pretty much simple here once this is done you come over here and then you tick ok now you go from the paths back to the layers and then you can see that you have your dotted lines created around this one so basically you can group all of these ones you call them the shapes or the main whatever you choose to call them but you have to make sure that you group it to make sure that this is looking nice and then it is already centered so you don't really have to do any other thing to it the last thing that i want to do to this part is i'll right click and go to the blending options and then i'm going to drop a couple of shadows around it so i'll increase the shadow a little bit like this and then i'll go ahead and then i'll click ok so the first group or the spec set of design is done we're going to the other ones which is going to contain the tips that we're going to create so in order to do that you're going to use this particular rounded rectangle by default when you choose your rounded rectangle you might not have the radius up to this 150 so you can just go ahead and choose 150 or any other thing but the radius determines how the edges is going to be rounded like this so you can see from here so it is going to show or determine how this is going to be so you have to decide on how you want it so basically i'm going to use 150 for this one and i'm going to create a radius around here i'm going to make sure that it is into the middle or the center a little bit like this and then this particular guideline that we created it is in the middle and then it comes into the dotted lines a little bit i might not have it at a perfect level because i'm not taking time to do this but once you get a concept you can just take time to do this really nicely so you create this one you can zoom in by holding z and then left clicking so i want to apply the gradient overlay on this one so i right click and go to the blending options and then i'm going to select the gradient overlay i have a couple of packs that i already have over here but then in case you want to set up your own what you have to do is you come to the color stop over here you click on it and then you can come to this color you click on it and then you set it to any color at all and then you click ok you go back to the next color stop that is if you want to use the two set of gradients so you can change this one to a different color pattern as well any one of them but since i have one already i have a couple of them installed already what i will do is i'll navigate over here i don't know which one to use but yeah i think i use this one for the first one and then i'll click ok and then i'll click ok again so the gradient has been applied to this one the next thing is i'll go ahead and press ctrl j to duplicate press ctrl t and then i'm going to transform this one out so we're going to right click on this duplicated rounded rectangle right click on it and then i'm going to clear the layer style so it gets back to the normal color that we did i'm going to the layer thumbnail and then i'm going to change this one to white I'll press ctrl t and then i'm going to transform it to this side and then use the arrow keys to position it in the middle once i have this done i can just select the two of them press ctrl t and then i'm going to transform it out and then i'll push it till it hits the guideline that we set so that was the basic reason why we set that particular guideline and then what i'm going to do next is on top of the rounded rectangle over here i'm going to create a new layer so i'm going to actually create another circle or ellipse on top of this but because it is a rectangle once you pick the ellipse tool it is going to blend or it is going to put them together merge them together that is why we create the new layer on top here so i'll go for my ellipse tool and then i'll hold shift and create an ellipse around this side like that and then i'll make sure that it is positioned somewhere around here so you realize that we added a gradient overlay to this rounded rectangle i'll hold alt and drag the effect onto the ellipse that we just created that is the circle that we just created and then you can go ahead from there and add your test to this so i already have my test so i'll go for the first one over here that is number one 
and I'll go and copy that one. I'll come into Photoshop, choose a test tool, and then I'm going to still use the popping sprite over here. So I'll paste them, make sure that this is in a semi bold like this, and then I'll drag it inside of the rounded rectangle like this. So once I'm done with this, I'm going to select the top, the heading over here, and then I'm going to choose this one that is the color picker and i'm going to pick a color that will give it sort of a different color from this one so i'll click ok and then i think this looks good but yeah that is fine we just want it to be readable to everyone out there so once i'm done with that i'll press ctrl j again drag this one up here and then i'm going to select this one change the color to white and then i'm going to make that one into zero one so that is going to be our zero one. So I'll press Ctrl T, that is the number one. Press Ctrl T to transform that one out like this. So it is positioned neatly over there. What we can do next is starting from the zero one to the rounded rectangle. I can select all of them and then group that one and rename that into one. Okay. So once you're done with this, you can use this same approach in dealing with the rest of the information that you want to put out there but you have to understand that you can press ctrl t to transform this if you feel like it is too big or some something like that yeah and then you can ma always make sure that you've positioned it to the guidelines that is set in order to make sure that your work will always be in alignment so with the basic idea of what we know about duplicate and changing and editing i'm going to duplicate this make the changes and then we can move ahead by fast forwarding so i'm going to duplicate this one by pressing ctrl j drag it down over here and then you can realize that we have this second guideline over here so you make sure that this is in between the line is in between this one to make sure that the alignment is on point so once this is duplicated you can change the name to two and then when you open it inside of that one you have your rounded rectangle the ellipse over here and everything so we double click on the FX over here and it will take us to the blending options and then I'll choose my gradient overlay, go into my gradient overlay again. Like I told you, I have a couple of gradients that I've already set here. So I'm going to make use of them. So I'll select this one, any one of them that you decide to pick, that is just fine. And then I'll click OK and then OK from here as well. And then I'll hold Alt, drag the effect onto the ellipse that we created and then you can see automatically this one changes so i'll pick my test tool and inside of this one i can change this one to zero two that is number two and then i'll go inside of my notepad select the second one over here copy it and then i'll come into photoshop choose my test tool and then i'm going to paste it over here so i'm going to select the topmost one choose a different color for it that will blend with the color that we chose so we maintain a black color over here and then we are good to go now i'm going to fast forward the third one and once i'm done i can copy them over here and then i'll give you a brief insight of how you're going to change these things a couple of things and then we'll be good to go okay so once i'm done with this i uh, we have the first three over here actually the tips are supposed to be six over here so I'm going to select the three and then i'm going to duplicate them i'll hold shift and then i'll drag it just to make sure that it is on on line on the same line with the one on the left side and then i'll make sure that this one also reaches right over here now what we are going to do from this point is that we're going to bring the circles to this side instead so what we're going to do is we're going to open the first one so instead here is going to be number four and this one is going to be number five and this is going to be number six so you can see that number four is here five and six so in order to get all of these to the same side to the left side at the same time i would have to select them simultaneously so i'm going to open this one the sixth one the fifth one and then the fourth one i'll open all of them and i'm going to select this one so i'll select the number three and select the ellipse come to the fifth one select number two and select the ellipse by holding alt and then i'll come to the fourth one i'll select zero one and select ellipse all by holding alt 
so once i'm done with that i can hold shift and drag them so you can see that it is dragging on the same lane it doesn't move up or down it just drags on the same lane and then you make sure that this one is positioned at a nicer place like this so once you're done with this you you realize that automatically this test will also have to be shifted to the right side so you select a test in them so first one is the cover second one is the avoid and third one would have to be the wash and then you can hold shift and then you drag that one also to this side just to make sure that it tallies with this one because this one because we are having the, the numbers on the right side that is why we shift, we shifted it to the left side so this one too has to be at the right side like this and then once you're done you can pick them one after the other again and then you can make the necessary edits so this one is going to be the fourth one we pick the test two coming in here and then we're going to delete one this one to zero four now you can go to the rounded rectangle double click on the effects over here and then you go into the gradient overlay and then you're going to choose a gradient overlay for it so i'll pin this one up and i'm going to get another probably yes i'll go for this one so i'll click ok and then okay from here and then i hold alt and then drag this one onto the ellipse too so you can see that this one will also change quickly i'll go into the notepad select my fourth one that is the fourth tip like i told you earlier these tips are the most important message that i want to send across it is not basically the design the design is also important as well but take care of these or take note of these particular tips that i'm putting over here they are from the world health organization so i'm going to change this one to black and then change the heading to the color that we are using so probably this one or on top over here and then you click ok so with the same concept and idea that we used in doing the fall we're going to apply it to the fifth and the sixth one all you're going to change the gradient and you're going to copy and paste the text over there so i'm going to fast forward this area and i'll see you at the other side So I'm going to close this one up and lastly I'm going to add a rectangle so I'll go for this rectangle over here and then I'll create my rectangle nicely over here I'll click on the layer thumbnail and choose this particular color that we used on top here probably the dark one we do and then I'll click OK now if you go to my test over here you realize that I have a quote over here and that is the message that i want to send across you see the whole world is in crisis now but the only thing that you can do is to stay calm and then you follow the precautionary measures that has been and some of them are these ones washing your hands and doing the necessary stuff so that you don't contact this pandemic virus i want you to know that i'm praying for you all but then you have to really stay safe out there so i'll go in and select my quote over here and then i'm going to copy that one out i'll pick my test tool and then i'm going to paste the test out so i'm going to change this color to white and then i'm going to drag this over here i'm going to select this one and change this to the semi bold italic i'll press ctrl t and then i'm going to transform this out to make sure that it is big enough to be seen and red then i'm going to press ctrl t and i'm going to center it so once i'm done with it i'll press ctrl d to deselect and then take time to use the arrow keys to position this nicely like i said earlier on this is one of the hardest times the world is facing you have to stay very very safe out there you just have to not be anxious but then you have to stay very alert so lastly i would choose my test tool again and in between or in the middle over here i'm going to I stay safe over here stay safe there and then i'm going to change the color to the first color that we started with probably this one so i'm going to make sure that this is in the caps so stay safe and i'm going to press ctrl t to transform this one like this and then i'm going to position it over here i'll make this one i'll change this one back to semi bold without the italics and i'll go to the toggle character and i'm going to close this one up a little bit like this so you have to stay safe out there that is how to create 
a very simple infographics card displaying a lot of tips for any other thing yeah thank you so much for sticking around to watch this video let me know in the comment section if this was helpful and if you want to see more tutorials and designs on infographics as well thank you so much for sticking around i'll see you guys in the next one it's innocent here and bye